Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, April 3rd, 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in, and they're showing heavy snow all the way through April. It is a sin, but much needed rain, and it's insane. That's the big story. 100 mile per hour gusts expected in southeast Wyoming. Five to ten inches of snow for the western mountains beginning Monday. Holy mackerel, you keep calm. It's boom time. Snow's blowing in. Casper, Wyoming, winter weather advisories have been issued for the Western Mountains in addition to high wind advisories for most of Wyoming beginning Monday. Casper even has a 50% chance of snow showers with up to an inch of accumulation possible Monday night and Tuesday, according to the National Weather Service. The Titan Gros Ventre, Avalosco, and Wind River Ranges, widespread accumulations of 5 to 10 inches are expected with locally higher amounts. Gusts of 60 to 65 miles per hour are expected, and that would be blizzard conditions, making it very difficult to travel in April. A blizzard. Holy macaroni. Now, Oregon Mountains as well, to see heavy April snowfall. And a few feet are going to... Fall down in just a few days here. High winds will hit the Willamette Valley as well. So we're going to get to the models in just a minute. Buckle up. Atlantic Canada is buckling up and braces for a spring snowstorm that could complicate travel, to say the least. Take a look at Halifax. Holy macaroni. And that means bring those snow shovels back out. Heavy snowfall headed for the Scotia. Snowfall warnings have been issued for Nova Scotia ahead of a spring storm that's set to bring upwards of 30 centimeters to parts of the province. That's a foot. Environment Canada says a low-pressure system will pass south of the province, bringing 15 to 20 centimeters of widespread snowfall. And that's just the first event. Let's check out all of the events. <laughs> now, right now, it's snowing in the northeast. Uh, light snow in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, as well as upstate New York. And there is snow in the Central Mountains of Colorado. Take a look at that. As the heavy snow moves into the western, the northwest here, the Willamette Valley and uh, the Cascades, take a look at those totals, up to four feet of, or more of heavy wet snow up in Washington State. 16, 18, 20 inches we could see in Oregon and a little pocket in uh, northern California here of some snow. But we're going to get to that whole precipitation matter in a second. Here's that heavy snow that, uh, well, there's Halifax right there into Monday morning is going to be picking up 7, 10, maybe even more. Some areas showing a foot or more. But there's a second event here that's going to hit northern Maine. It's insane. Thursday and Friday of this week. Yeah, April 7th and 8th. Could bring up to 18 inches. We're going to keep a close eye on that. If it shifts south, could bring snow to the entire northeast. But we also have snow moving into Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, and everywhere in the West by mid-April. In fact, take a look at the South Sierras. Starting on Monday, April 11th, snow is going to start to build in the mountains and it's going to move south through Tuesday and into Wednesday. So this is going to bring much needed moisture throughout California because all the woke tards are bitching about the drought. And, well, it might get quenched here. Take a look at the amount of rain equivalent in the mountains here, two, three inches. So this is good news for the area that's completely dry. It's going to be completely saturated over the next few weeks. Now, New York suffers record March cold. Toronto breaks century-old low temperature benchmarks, and the UK forecasts its coldest start to April in 100 years. Grand solar minimum much? Seismic update, no quakes of note. We have Large numbers of aftershocks from the large New Caledonia quakes. We have aftershocks in the Philippines as well as Japan. But worldwide, all is quiet on the Western Front. Now let's take a look at the sun. Active region 2978 looks quite impressive. It's now Earth-facing. The only problem is its magnetic class is just beta, AR2978, which means that there's pretty good a pretty good split between negative and positive portions of the spot. And when we get flaring, we have some of the blue in with the red and some of the red in with the blue. So once we have positive and negative mixing, we can get some flaring. But when they're split, well, the probabilities are low. As you can see here, C flare 25%, M at 5%, X flare at 1%. The same for an alpha magnetic class, which is now AR2976. The really uh, active region that for the last 14 days has been creating quite a stir on Earth, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Worldwide Volcano News Update, 
all is quiet on the volcano front. Very little uh, volcanic activity, all within the normal range. Now, what's not in the normal range is the Gulf Stream. It's at its weakest for more than a thousand years. Now, why does that matter? Well, the Atlantic meridional overturning current, better known as the Gulf Stream system, has controlled Northern Europe's climate. Before that, the AMOX near total shutdown 12,000 years ago is considered the prime suspect for producing the Younger Dryas event. So we have a plasma outburst from the sun that melts all the ice in a few years, huge glacial outwashes, all of the scab lands that we know about that Randall Carlson talks about. And because of that, all the freshwater mixing in the Atlantic shuts down the AMOC or the Gulf Stream. And it starts to get very cold in Europe and the glaciers build. And within a period of just a few hundred years, maximum glaciation once again. And well, it's happening again now, folks. So stay tuned for more boom. Iowa's bird flu death toll tops 13 million. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these headlines if you're in the U.S. about millions of birds being culled in Iowa and other states. Now, this is getting quite significant because these are hens. These are the egg layers that supply America with their eggs. And it's almost 20% of them that have now been murdered in Iowa alone. Other states have murdered similar amounts of chickens. Now, why do I say murder? Because a halal kill of a farm animal or a respectable kill, in my opinion, would be an animal that you kill rapidly with the least amount of pain that can provide for your family. These chickens just all get lit on fire and buried in a hole. It's absolutely disgusting. And the facts have been in. Research has shown that almost 90% of all the large cullings of animals, those were all healthy animals. So this is completely egregious and is being accelerated by the powers that be to simply raise the price of food and to put you, well, in a predicament gives them the upper hand. Are you picking it up? Object crashed into Mars and created this new impact crater, which looks like a large rocky body is still sitting in the hole. I bet you that's the first place Elon Musk goes when he goes to Mars. What do you think? Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt Elon ever gets anywhere near Mars, to be quite honest. But Southwest apologizes for delays cancellations and blame blames technology issues. Now, most of the headlines you'll see don't say that. They're going to say uh, it, it's blaming other issues. Weather. But in fact, this is the correct headline. Technology issues. And the technology is being affected by the KP index. And if you just look at the last f four days, the KP was at KP6 on the 31st of March. And on executive site, it makes no sense for mask mandates on Shut up. Um, it was at went up to KP7 here at the Leningir Magnetic Observatory on April 2nd and was at KP6 here on the 3rd. All of these levels are capable of affecting communication satellites, specifically air navigation. So here's your technology issues provided to you by the sun. If you don't know what the KP index and we share it every night, you should have Googled it. But if you're, if you're that lazy, I'll provide you the definition. The KP index describes the disturbance of Earth's magnetic field caused by solar wind. The faster the solar wind, the greater the turbulence. Now, the index ranges from zero for low activity to nine, which means that an intense geomagnetic storm is underway. The grid fails when we were at KP9 and that the plasma speed and density pushes up past what would be KP9, KP10. But because this is a made-up scale, there is no KP10. So, there's that. So, if you see the index at KP9, you can kiss your YouTube away. Scientists think solar storms will knock out the internet and electrical systems. Well, we got pretty close. We hit KP7. Just two more clicks and we're up at the death zone. And, and that's not the death of humans.
That's the death of the modern world. The death of the internet. The death of the empire. Thank God. So we're hoping for another Carrington event to kick off the sun at any moment. Because we're ready. Are you? You should be preparing. Now, Machu Picchu has been called the wrong name for over 100 years. Historians reveal its true name, and it is beautiful. The Incas who built the ancient city, I don't believe that, likely called it Huayna Picchu. Huayna Picchu, not Machu Picchu. In fact, Machu Picchu means old mountain, old mountain peak, when Huayna Picchu actually means newer young mountain peak. And because many people think that the the people living in this region built this city in 1400. Well, they're as delusional as most of the rest of the world. And they've simply been calling it the wrong name for all the right reasons. Because it is an old mountain with an ancient city on top. And the original name, which they claim is Hawaiiana Pichu, I believe is disinformation to lead us all to think that this is a modern city that was just recently built in 1400. 300 years after the Pueblo people left the Southwest, Machu Picchu was being built. I doubt it. <laughs> now, if you want to survive and thrive in the future, please build your own Johnson Sioux bioreactor. I know everyone's been composting their whole life, but those compost piles you've been working on are pale in comparison to the product that comes out of your own Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Now, the Johnson Sioux bioreactor method of creating compost is quite different from other composting methods in several respects. The most common commercial windrow composting processes are usually designed and operated for speed and maximum product flow. Unfortunately, this focus does not allow the compost to degrade sufficiently. It can even produce an immature compost that in some cases is detrimental to plant growth. Now, what the Johnson Sioux Bioreactor does is it completely composts all organic matter to its perfect state. The perfect state of being, which is the most biocomplete compost additive you can put in your permaculture, your gardens, and your soils. It provides all the necessary bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi. Both of them are in there. So you could take the most depleted soils, add a little beam, and you get the boom. Now, beam is pretty expensive. It costs $25 a pound or more. And if you build your own bioreactor, you can make 1,000 pounds of beam in just one year, which is enough to do... 50 acres, 100 acres, or more. Holy macaroni. So get on the beam in the Johnson Sioux Bioreactor and make it yourself. See Venus, Saturn, and Mars shine close before the sun rises this week. We've had a, a, a gaggle of completely fascinating planetary alignments this April so far and at the end of March where we have asteroids, comets, and planets all in the same region. But we still have two more good days that if you're an early bird and you wake up early on April 4th and 5th, you can catch the show. And we're talking about Vega, Denim, Altair, and Antares. Those are the stars you want to locate and look straight down to the horizon. Looking southeast 45 minutes before sunrise, and you're going to see a gaggle of planets. Saturn, which will look like a little dot. Mars, which will be brighter in red, right above it. And to the east, Venus, the brightest of all the celestial bodies other than the moon and the sun. So go out and look up if you're up early in the morning before sunrise. Monday and Tuesday, April 4th and 5th, catch the show. Ho, ho. Hope you got something out of the video. Boom! That was a boom in your face to knowledge. We love each and every one of you. Share this video with like-minded people. Become a Patreon and support the work we do. Be a hero, like I said, to share this video. We love you. Be safe.
Let's move. The knowledge. Mm. 